Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how we use this 2-axis gimbal, the stock battery of the tarantula, uh, an extra JST connector, and the tarantula itself to get this kind of result from your flight video. Okay, the first thing we need to do is splice this wire, the new JST connection, into the existing wire coming straight out from the battery. So I need to take away some of this insulation. So just use a simple craft knife or a scalpel or whatever you're comfortable with. And just literally I'm going to cut very gently through. And then pick another spot a little bit further down. It doesn't have to be too far. That's probably a little bit too much actually, but never mind. Now I simply just cut up it. There's various ways of doing this, whatever way you're comfortable with. Um, this I find quite easy. I'm actually going to leave this possibly leave this on actually because it's a very rubbery feel to this um, insulation so I might actually just leave it and then just let it fold back over. A uh, little tip somebody gave me ages ago uh, when doing electrics is don't do the two in the same point because if ever there's a problem with the tape or print wrap you're going to use they can touch back together obviously given a short so if I come down a little bit on the wire here so it's not going to touch this wire and do the same sort of thing. Let's just try cutting this one side uh, with one round once rather than the two and see whether it will peel back. I'll just go back up this way. There we are. So those two wires now would have a heck of a job to touch, um, which quite a good tip. I, I've found it useful over the years anyway. There we go, that's ready for soldering. There we go, so I'm just going to, the ends of these are prepared, I'm just literally going to pull the wire just slightly apart just to give me a little bit of a gap in there just so I can slide that in. Just blend in the wires a little bit, just make it easier to solder. And there you go, just push that in there. I'll solder that up and then we'll do it the same on the other one. You can also just literally lay it across the top and solder them together, but this wire seems quite easy to do this with, so I've done it this way this time. Sorry about that, I didn't hit the record button as I soldered it, but basically you just simply solder it on really, just, just that simple. But. Uh, that looks a bit of a con. I'll um, show you on the other one. But basically, that's it. It's all tucked in nicely. And just the same on this one as well. Oops, that's wound up coming off. It's not going to work my theory of rolling that back over. Um, I think I need shrink wrap or uh, some insulation tape. I don't think I've actually done it this way before. There might be a reason why you shouldn't do it this way, but uh, if anyone knows of one, I'm sure that will appear in the comments. Basically, it seems quite a good idea of uh, doing it. I've also made sure that this wire that I'm using here on the JST connector is actually of equal thickness to the wire that's actually on the gimbal itself. So uh, make sure of that. Don't use thin wire if you should be using thick wire. So we we'll just give that a go. I did a really good solder last time, so I bet it's not going to happen this time, is it? There we go. That's all there is to it. It's nice and solid. It's not going to go anywhere. Got a good contact. And as you can see, that one's gone through as well. There we go. I'll just get some insulation tape on that because I need to get some shrink wrap. Uh, but I usually use shrink wrap on these sort of things. I'll just pop a bit of insulation tape on. Okay, so put the insulation tape on here just a little bit and simply connect up your main battery supply 
to your quad. And as you can see, these wires are actually thicker than these ones. But as I said before, just check that they're okay for your uh, gimbal itself. Pop that all in there. The gimbal is going to go, obviously, round that way. We can either fit that there or pop it through there. I think I'll try it. I'm actually going to do it that way. I'm not sure whether I get the props in if I do it there, but uh, you'll soon see on the video whether or not we do. And then just make sure that does fit to there, and it does, or you could come up through the other way, entirely up to you. And then here comes the real technical bit again. I just literally, my elastic bands, just to fit it on. Just left that across there last time and then simply the same with the other just give it a bit of a crossover i think that's where it sits let's bring it back that's it if that doesn't quite work i may well mount it forward i can't remember how i did it before but we we'll see what this video looks like and then i just use a couple of velcro um the cable ties, I think they were originally. I just stuck two of them together because uh, I didn't have a long enough bit of Velcro. Uh, very cheap and easy. This really is belt and braces. I've never never had this move. Um, you're not flying fast, so it's not really a problem. Um, but I will just pop this on just for safety, just to make sure I don't lose the gimbal and the camera. And then just literally pull it around. It's got a reasonable grip on it and it's just as you can see it's not going to go anywhere it's not actually doing any heavy work of holding it it's just purely to stop it falling off and there we go that's it that's exactly how i mount it and we'll just connect the gimbal up making sure it's around the right way of course on the plug this is really tight, this plug. It's one thing that I found quite strange about it, is it is tight. And then we just leave that to get balanced out. And it should just click on in a minute. There's a little LED underneath. If I turn it around, the gimbal's not going to be very happy. But that flash is red until it's actually, I don't know, it's not bound, but basically when it gets going. Um, and then, as you can see, hopefully the gimbal's working absolutely fine. So I'll take this outside. And give it a run the other thing is you can use the standard legs that come with it that come with the tarantula and that does just just <laughs> get past there but to be honest I, I hand launch and hand land um i am looking at making a sort of soft landing rig around it but uh, i've not had a problem yet and i've flown it loads of times so anyway see what you think of the results mm -hmm.